drinking water is available at the other end and so also first aid and the services of two doctors are available at the entrance. I hope they will not be required this year. There is a request to those of you who are standing there to go to the gallery as it will help to improve the loudspeaker system since the voice of the absorbed. Available for 5 rupees at the entrance. The other is the fourth impression of We the People, which is available at a special price of rupees 50 against the normal price of rupees 80 again at all the three entrances. There is a request to all of you that after the meeting, Please do not touch the exit altogether because the vast audience has gathered in a span of about 90 minutes. You should not try to go in in five minutes as we are chanting. Tomorrow, Mr. Bhantiwala will be sitting on the finance bill on the eastern lawn of CCI and the officers of the Western India Regional Council. Those of you all particulars can get it from the forum office. He will also be speaking on the union budget in Pune on 23rd, in Delhi on 25th, in Ahmedabad on 26th, in Bangalore on 31st, and in Madras on 1st. You may inform your friends and relations in those cities who are interested in attending the meeting. Mr. Nani Pajwala, one and the only Field Marshal of India, San Manisha, and good friends. Don't worry, my good friends, I am not going to come between you and Nani and the field marshal. Mine will be a very brief evening. As a matter of fact, to use cricketing language, in my time the fast bowler has bowled only two or three overs. To make the ball old so that the spinner and the good bowler can bowl to you. What a wonderful gathering this evening. And from year to year, it keeps on growing. And Nani, you are thanking me over there for the Cricket Club of India ground being made available to you. The boot is on the other foot. We are sincerely grateful to the Forum of Free Enterprise and to you, Nani, for doing us the honor of having your speech here, year after year. My friends, on behalf of the Forum of Free Enterprise in general, and Nani Palkiwala in particular, I extend to you a very warm and cordial welcome. I won't introduce these two personalities to you. If you don't know them, then you have no business to warm up those seats. And being a bit in the public eye, I know what these introductions mean. Nani, whenever I am the chief guest at any function, the president says Mr. Vijay Merchant needs no introduction. But he was born on 12th October 1911. No fault of mine, I can assure you. And then my entire cricket career, my career as a social worker, and they don't utter the last line because they do not know. Nor do I know. Only he knows. Please, Marshal. India has gone nearly mad over our victory at Metro. Public memory is short. But your victory in 1971 in Dhaka was the greatest victory that India has ever seen. And it's just in the matter of coincidence that the final first leader is the same country. <laughs> Mr. Nani Pajwala, in one case, it was Sunil Gavaskar, the captain, in the other, three marshals, Sam Manisha. Nani, year after year, we are getting bigger crowds. 
and I suppose the crowd today will be the biggest because according to the way man, it is a favorable budget. We are awaiting your comments on this year's budget particularly, but I have a number of suggestions to make to you. Three or four days after the budget has been placed before the Lok Sabha, you offer your comments. Nani, my suggestion is for your consideration only. Next year, a week before the budget comes out, why don't you give us your own budget? Make out your budget in as great a detail as possible. Let it be spread over a full page of our important babies so that most of those people who do not understand the intricacies of the budget are able to make a comparison. And believe me, that would be something fantastic, something which the people would look forward to. And I'm sure that this entire stadium would be full and one day and a day might arrive when we might have to ask you to sit in the committee box of the Cricket Club of India and watch an entire gathering listening to you just as in days of your the listeners and saw a test match. My good friends, extremely nice of you to be so punctual. We sometimes set our watches by the time at which Nani Palchiwala arrives. Today he gave himself a little more time because of the crowd waiting outside in the cricket club of India to see him and to see Field Marshal Manik. I have done my good friend a warm and cordial welcome to you all. And one thing more. Mr. Pai, to you and Mr. Divakar, we are very grateful for the wonderful arrangements you have made for this public. Your efficiency and that of your deputies are so great that we take things for granted. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't be Indian if we didn't take everything for granted. So, to these two people of the Forum of Free Enterprise, a million thanks for their consideration and understanding of our public. Thank you. It is my proud privilege to have been invited here to preside over this conclave of so many people who have come here to listen to Mr. Panchimala give us a critique on the Union Budget. Weeks before the Union Budget came out, we all had great hopes, great thoughts, great prognostications on what would happen. Journalists, industrialists, Presidents of stock exchanges and presidents of chambers and commons gave their views and suggestions. We had great hopes. We felt that this new and youthful regime would produce for us a budget which would do us individually and collectively a great deal of good. I do not know where our hopes have been fulfilled. Ladies and gentlemen, normally us common individuals look at the budget from a very selfish point of view. How is it going to help us? Has it helped us? I'm happy to say and I'm sure all of us will be equally happy to learn that this year the tax collector will not take away all our money as he has in the past. Our wealth tax has been reduced considerably. The compulsory deposit contributions have ceased. And speaking for my wife, she must be overjoyed 
that the burden and the fear of a state duty has now escaped her. She will no longer worry about seeing that I eat too many fats. She will no longer worry about my indulgence in alcohol or my enterprise and walking around too much. Ladies and gentlemen, the finance minister has been bold in his budget money. Has he been bold enough? I know not. Could he have been bolder? I know not. I do know that he has imposed a very high impost on petroleum products. I also know that his colleague, the Minister for Railways, has made our travel, our transportation, and the movement of our raw materials a very expensive item. What it will do to us individually and collectively, I know not. But we have Mr. Pashkiwala here, who will enlighten us. Immediately after the budget, many men have given superficial and off-the-cuff points of view on the budget. Today, we have a man here who has studied the profession, who has enlighten us on what the budget is going to do for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Palkiwala. Marshal Manikshah, Mr. Vijay Merchant, Mr. M. R. Pai, ladies and gentlemen, I am most grateful to the Phil Marshal and to my good friend Vijay for their very kind words about me. I have spoken a few times in the past on the budget, but this year's talk is going to be a novel experience for me. There is little to criticize and less to denounce in the budget. If such a thing happened in the United States, a suit for very heavy damages would be filed against the government for doing something so thoughtlessly, a suit for about a hundred million dollars in damages for depriving a man of his occupation. <laughs> in language of studied moderation, I would say that this year's budget is the finest budget of the last three decades. It is an epoch-making budget for redesigning India. When the history of this year comes to be written, I think Indian budget of 85 will be regarded as the biggest economic story of Asia. And it's appropriate that such a thing has happened in the year which is the 125th anniversary, as Mr. Pai pointed out in his letter to the press, 125th anniversary of the Indian budget. The first Indian budget having been introduced by one Mr. Wilson in the year 1860. And it's the 100th anniversary of the Congress Party itself 